So a lot of you guys have already worked the VARA network on O3. Um, but when uh, John Zaruba put the uh, Digipeter, packet radio Digipeter, up on uh, a 160-foot tower over at Rowan, the game kind of changed. And so I wanted to go through what's going on on that network and, and uh, talk specifically about packet radio and VARA and the differences between them uh, and also get into um, what I'm going to talk about is the different levels of communication. Uh, there's a bunch of different components in digital communication and, and they're independent of each other. So for example, I had a guy uh, say something a couple of months ago where he said, uh, we're gonna replace a signal link with sound modem. Okay. There are two different levels. That's like saying, I'm gonna replace my Ford with an SUV. Okay. And so I wanna try and get through what, what, what some of that confusion can be. What are the different protocols? How do messages get coded into protocols? What programs do you use? And then once you build all this stuff in your computer, how does it actually get to the radio? So this is what's going on on O3. See if we can find the right buttons here. One of these is a laser pointer, yeah. So here's the W2 MMD RMS gateway down at the clubhouse. Uh, but all of this stuff's on O3 up here, except for APRS. And there's a VARA FM radio, uh, um, VARA FM input. And there's an AX25 input both going into the same gateway here, both on O3, and they're actually all both through the same radio, but they're different protocols. Carl, when his is up, is the same thing. Carl, how often is your, your system up? 24-7. So VARA, AX25, and then the uh, Glassboro Digi is up. I do say I have unbalanced parentheses there. Nobody needs to correct me on that. Um, and there's a packet BBS there. So any of you guys who were retro back in the 80s and working packet can go back and work that. And then the packet protocol is the same as is used for uh, uh, APRS back down on uh, 144.39. So this is how a digital signal is created. Starting all the way over at the beginning, you've got a message when that message might be the ubiquitous hello world. And then that's got to get formatted according to some protocol. And I'll show you how that gets formatted with, with packet because it's public. So that might mean, okay, there's your message, but it's got to have the to call and the from call, who's, who's originating, who's it going to. And there's usually some type of a checksum at the end that basically in an oversimplified way, adds up everything in there and tells you whether you got it right or not. So that's what I mean about the data format as a protocol. It then somehow has to get coded into audio data. And the way I think about this is like an MP3 file. An MP3 file is data or a program that tells a device how to make sounds, right? That's what an MP3 file is, okay? And so there's a program in here that's taking this message and it's turning it into sound data. And then you need some kind of a device to take that sound data and turn it to actually into tones on a cable so you can pump it into a radio. And then somewhere you gotta have a way that you're gonna key the radio to send audio. And that's, that's uh, I'm gonna talk about why that's important with uh, one, of the, uh, one of the setups that we used uh, a little bit later on. So they're the kind of different pieces along this thing. And the hierarchy I'm talking about is, is an application, whatever the protocol modulator is, and the audio tone. So the application might be Windlink, the protocol might be pack, packet, and the audio tone converter is the signal link. And, and my point on this is that we could take out packet here and put in uh, the VARA, and everything else would work. Okay, they're all independent of each other. Okay, especially when you're dealing with something like uh, like Windlink. So you don't get into the situation where you think you're going to replace a signal link with a sound mode, and where where the the, the signal link is up here. Excuse me, the signal link is down here, and the sound modem is up here. That's the kind of thing I wanted to try to avoid. So you've got two different protocols. You've got packet and you've got VARA. And the application that creates packet is, uh, if you're using software, is a software package called Sound Modem. Well, we've been using this a lot. Um, it's, it, it's free and it seems to work pretty well. Uh, if you were part of the packet radio group back in the 80s, you used a terminal node controller. Anybody build a TNC2 here? Anybody build a TNC-1? There it goes, only John. John and I are the, okay. Um, back then, the computing power in a computer wasn't possible. It wasn't possible to create this kind of stuff. It had to be done in hardware, but now it can be done in software. OK, 
thing. And for VARA, there's VARA HM, VARA HF, excuse me, VARA FM, VARA HF, and VARA satellite. There's actually a VARA version for satellite communication. Okay, so that's how the protocols tie out to the programs that create the protocols. So what's Packet? Um, Packet's been around since the 80s. Uh, the story that I heard of how it was created was Tom Clark, W3IWI, who was uh, a wonderful guy. I got to work with him. Um, he was a president of AMSAT. He was a senior scientist at NASA. His job was measuring continental drift. But uh, what he said is he, he basically took Phil Karn, K9Q, and Bob McGuire and 4HY, stuck him in a room together and locked him in until they and wouldn't let him out until they developed the AX25 protocol. And it's a public protocol. It's, it's asynchronous, which means it's not tied to a time value. If, if the way I think I understand this is your clock in FT8 has to be really accurate because the software is expecting a packet to start at a particular time. All right. Packet is not like that. Packet can start anytime at once. It starts whenever a packet comes out. And so the software has to do what I think is called clock recovery, which is figure out where in the beginning of a packet is. Okay. And that's why this is uh, asynchronous as opposed to something like Pactor. If you've ever listened to Pactor, it's eh, oh, eh, oh, eh, oh. very careful timing. So it doesn't have to figure out when the beginning of a packet is. Okay. It's generally used in connected mode, which means you're talking to a particular station that's acknowledging the packet before it sends the next packet on, as opposed to the way things like audio and video are transmitted, where they just shoot the stuff out. And if you miss a packet, it doesn't really matter. What you care about is continuity of, of the video or the sound, whereas in data, you don't care so much about the speed, you care about the, uh, the accuracy of it. Packets used in Bell 202 tones, 1200 hertz and 2200 hertz and i'm going to play a packet for you and you can hear that it's basically the same type of tones you know over and over again it will check the frequency before it transmits and it retrans it uh it will retransmit a packet if it's not acknowledged so there basically is a a uh, process where i'll send you a packet and if you don't acknowledge it i'll repeat it and then I'll repeat it again and again and again, depending on how many, what the parameters are at an exponentially increasing time. So that's all built into the uh, AX25 packet protocol. This is what the frame looks like. You're starting with, where's my thing? You're starting with a flag that says this is the beginning of the packet. Destination address, W2KBF, source address, WB2MNF. Control bits, this is what kind of a packet is it? Am I asking for a connection? Am I creating, sending you uh, data? Am I asking for a disconnect? Um, the packet ID, I believe, if I remember right, is you can have multiple packets in what's called a frame. In other words, you can send multiple packets in the same transmission from when it hits the push to talk and releases it. And this is what number packet it is. And I can show you that. And usually you can have up to seven packets in, in one frame. Then you've got the information field in here. This is your hello world piece. Okay, this is what I was talking about before. FCS is a frame check sequence. It's basically adding up the characters in it. And so you can tell on the receiving side whether you decoded it properly. And there's your flag on the end. So this is basically what a full AX25 uh, frame looks like. That's what a whole packet looks like. Now, like I said, there's two ways to do that. There's hardware uh, and there's, uh, there's software, the TNC was a hardware device. It hooked up to your uh, computer through a, a DB25 connector if you uh, build a TNC1. Um, it made the packets internally with, uh, with, with hardware and it connected directly up to the radio. So the device that made the, that, that built the protocol and connected to radio was one physical device. Um, I, somebody still uses them. I think John's, John's you're running a TNC over at the, uh, the, the repeater, right? It's a Cantronics TNC, right? It's one of, the, one of the more recent ones. But the point is that it's a hardware device, as opposed to sound mode, which is a program that runs in your computer that takes the message that I just showed you and creates a modulation uh, the data for it. But you need another device to get it to connect up to your, uh, up to your radio. This is what sound modem looks like. Um, and this is actually MMD talking to KBF. Um, 
And what's red is MMD going to KBF and what's black is KBF coming back. And what I've highlighted here is the uh, sequence numbers. So here you can see he's sending uh, packet four, five, six, and seven. And down here in one frame, MMD has acknowledged five, six, and seven, right? So you can actually look at this and see what's going on. This is data. This is the ax for the data. Then here's a, 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 uh, an, an acknowledgement, final acknowledgement. There's a disconnect request and there's KBF uh, sending a UA frame that acknowledges the disconnect. So you can actually look at the conversation in sound modem and kind of see what's going on. So let's contrast that with VARA. VARA was developed by EA5HVK. Um, it's proprietary. Uh, it's quadrature amplitude modulation, I think. And I'm looking at Mark, uh, who may be uh, nodding or nodding the wrong way, but I think it's, it's basically not just two tones. I think there's phase shifts in there. There's multiple tones. Uh, it's very, it's far more complicated and you'll be able to hear that. Uh, it's automatic speed sensitive compression and speed setting, which means its speed varies depending on how fast it can go. It, it finds out that it can go. Uh, if it starts, if it finds that it's getting packets through consistently at a, at a particular speed, it will go faster. And I, I'll show you some examples of that as we go along. Uh, it's connected mode and it's asynchronous, just the same as, uh, as AX25 is. So it's different from like a streaming protocol like video, which, uh, which, which is not like that. Uh, this is a VAR FM interface. You've probably worked with it, but you can see here, this is an example of a slow speed packet. We're running at 500 bits per second. You've got four um, uh, quadrants to the graph here. And this thing will show you what your speed is as you're going along. Uh, this is a, the way a uh, two meter FM connection is gonna start out. But this is how fast it can go. And I cut off the bottom of the, uh, the, uh, the uh, frame here, unfortunately, but I think this is, about, uh, this is about 16 kilobits. And when Al and I were running back and forth between his house and my house, which is a, a, about a mile and a half away, I think we hit 22 kilobits at one point, which means you're using extreme compression in that, as opposed to AX25, which is gonna be 1200 bit baud, no matter how good you've got a connection. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's, see, let's see if I can make this work. What I did here is I took uh, SDR console, SDR receiver, the same thing we use for um, or satellite reception, and I recorded a series of packets and it's both in packet and in, uh, in VARA. And I wanna let you listen to them. In packet, uh, you'll see how similar they sound going back and forth between, this was from M probably from MMD to um, uh, KBF, right? And let me see if I can make this work without screwing it up. See how they kind of all sounded the same? The only thing that varied was their length. All right, so here, as, and you can, you can see it too. Um, nope, next. Next slide. All right, here's Mara. Okay, what happened there? There were a bunch of packets that came in at the end of a variety show, right? I didn't plan it that way. It just happened. So you can see how different it is. And, and when you get into even the faster var, which I didn't have an example of, that doesn't sound like either of these either. It just sounds like a hiss. Okay. So VAR is very different from, uh, from packet, both in the way it sounds and the way it looks uh, in terms of bandwidth and, and, and stuff like that. 
by the way, if you ever need to do an example like this, um, SDR console will create an MP4 file out of what you're running through M through SDR console. I did all of that within SDR console. There's a uh, button that you could see me fooling around with up here that basically will, will allow you to make a video from what you're doing. So if you ever need an example of what waveforms look like or something like that, you can do it all within SDR console. You just need a little bit of juice. When I tried this on my little laptop, I was decoding the IQ stream and trying to create the MP4 file at the same time. And SDR console said, nah, that ain't gonna work. So I took it home on my workstation and it was able to do that. So pretty cool capability of, of, uh, of software to find radio. Okay. Uh, other WinLink protocols, there's Pactor, there's Robust Packet, um, Vara HF, which is what we use on HF. I guess there's an Iridium. Uh, if you're using satellite phone, you can do that. And then there's Telnet. And Telnet is basically, uh, you're not using radio at all. You're going directly from your application program out to the internet. And that's WinLink, basically. There you're using WinLink as though you were using Outlook or something like that. You're not even going through uh, radio. All right, so how do we create the modulation itself? This is uh, the sound modem um, uh, setup schedule. And what I wanna show you here is I've outlined the, the inputs and the outputs. So you're going into sound modem on a TCP port, okay? And uh, TCP port 8100 is enabled here. Okay, so that's how you're getting from your, your uh, your messaging program into sound modem. That's how you're sending in your message bits. It's going in through a TCP port. How are you getting out of it? Okay, you're getting out of it in a sound device. And this is a Windows sound device. We've re I renamed these devices to what the, what the device it actually is. Okay, but when you set this up, you basically say, I'm going to the sound card here. Okay, and in this case, it's a master's communications uh, set, uh, external sound card, which I'll show you pictures of. But it could be a signal link, or it could be if you're running a 991 or a 7100 or something that's a, uh, uh, a radio that's got an internal sound card. It could be directly there. Okay. So that's how you get in and out of uh, sound modem. Okay. VARA is similar. There's a setup program. The setup uh, screen on VARA is a little bit different. You use the same setup screen for VARA FM and VARA HF, and you can't read it really uh, here, but it's, uh, it's, it's another uh, uh, IP port. Okay, I think it's 8301 or something like that that's, uh, that's coming in. So that's how you're talking in to VARA, and coming out, it's the same thing. Coming out, you're basically saying, you know, this is, this, these are the sound, this is the sound card that I'm going out to. And what's interesting is this is the, I, I didn't realize you could do this, but I just showed you Packet and Vara coming out talking to the same sound card on the same computer. I didn't think you could do that, but you can. Okay, and that's how we're doing it down in the clubhouse. We basically have um, the uh, sing, uh, uh, sound modem is talking packet and VARA is talking VARA and they're both talking to the same sound card connected to the same radio. So we're using the same radio with the same sound card for two different protocols and it works, strangely enough. Again, I didn't think that was gonna work but Carl told me I was a fool because I couldn't figure it out. So of course I had to go figure it out and, and son of a gun, it works. And this is the way it works with VARA HF. All right, it's just, you're just basically uh, specifying the, the output device. You've already specified the port on that slide, you know, two slides ago, but this is how you specify that. All right, so that's the middle part of it. The top part of it is how are you creating that message to begin with? And there's a bunch of different ways you can do that. That could be a WinLink message. It could be an APRS location. It could be chat, okay? It could be any number of things where you're creating the hello world piece of it. Uh, and the thing that took me a little bit of time was uh, that if you're used to working in Outlook or something, you type your message and you press send and it sends the message, okay? FT8 is the same way. You type something or if you could type something in, you, 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 would, you, you send and that's because the protocol and the message writing piece of it are in the same program. You've only got one choice when you're sending through Outlook. 
Okay, you're sending it to whatever the ISP is that you specified. Winlink, it's different. You create your message and you post it in the outbox, and then you come back later and decide what protocol you're going to use to send. So that's what I mean by the message creation is completely different from the protocol that you're using to send it. Okay. So I won't spend a lot of time with WinLink as you probably already worked with it, but this is basically what, what it looks like. It looks like, looks like Outlock. You, you've got, uh, you know, mailboxes in here and re recorded messages in here, and you can send a new message or request and stuff like that. And here's the little difference. Okay, once you send your, well, wait a second, I skipped the slide. So here I'm sending a message to Carl and I'm sending testing, but there's no send button here. Instead, it's post to outbox. Okay, it's just going to post it into the outbox. It, 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 it uh, does not send it yet. And then you're going to open a session and I'm going to specify which session I want. And here I'm going to specify a packet wind link session. That pull down menu lists all the different ways you can send stuff in. Um, in WinLink, and each of those is different, okay? It's not like, the, you know, you're just choosing a different device. The actual uh, window that you get when you select that is different depending on what it is. So for example, this is, uh, this is a packet WinLink session. Note that there's a, a button up here for 1200 baud because there's an option in, in sound mode to choose either 1200 baud or 9600 baud. And I'm pointing that out because there's no button like that in VARA. Because as you, as you saw earlier, VARA will set its own speed. It doesn't let you set the speed, but Packet does. So that's what I mean by these things being very different. Okay, and this is basically, uh, it's, it's uh, um, the WinLink session has talked to, uh, talked to KISS over port 80, uh, 8100. It's now talking to sound modem and it's, it's, it's ready to send. VARA is different. I mean, VARA's got no you know, uh, baud rate. And all it does is say, yeah, I was able to connect to the VARA FM program and, uh, and, and that's it. Uh, VARA HF is a little bit different in that VARA HF, a lot of the HF stations are on different frequencies. And when you want to talk to an HF station, you, you specify the call letters of the HF station. So you're going to do that. And I'm not going to show you this because it's not really germane to what I'm talking about. But you can click on channel selection and it will give you a list of the stations that it thinks you can talk to based on the propagation schedule that it has figured out based on the propagation data that's most recently available to it. So I would go down and I would say, I'm going to click on W1EO. It knows that W1EO is on uh, 70, uh, 7092.5 and it will change the frequency of the radio using the cat control that you specified, and then it'll automatically do it. So you don't specify what the frequency is, you specify the station and it will set it through CAT. So that's why you've got all this, this dial frequency stuff up here in this HF WinLink session that you didn't have in the VHF. Because the way WinLink handles HF is very different from the way it handles uh, VHF. Okay. And if you're interested, this is the way the uh, packet RMS gateway works. So this is the gateway program down at the clubhouse. And you can see over here when it boots up, it's launching sound modem out of C users W2MMD. It's initializing itself. It's talking back and forth on the port. And now it's acknowledged it. And then it goes around and it, it launches VARA TMC from C colon VARA FM, VARA FM, and initializes that. So it basically goes through and sets itself up on the packet TNC, then it goes through and sets itself up on, on, the, uh, on the VARA TNC. Right. So how do you get the audio signal from the computer into, uh, into the radio? Uh, there's three ways that people have tried to do this. Uh, one is using the computer sound card. You take the uh, output speaker output of your uh, of your computer. You plug it into the microphone input of the radio, and and vice versa. And I'll come back to why that doesn't work very well. Uh, the second is to use a USB connected device like the Signalink or or the master's communication device, which we really like a little bit better. And the third is if you've got a, uh, a virtual sound card. If your radio uh, has a virtual sound card, you plug the USB port of the radio into your computer and all of a sudden sound cards show up. You specify them in the, uh, uh, in the, uh, uh, as, as the devices and, and, and that's it. 
The reason the computer sound card doesn't work, and we tried this, Chris and I were trying this down at the clubhouse with a, a Baofeng uh, and the computer uh, piped straight out. The first thing is, how are you pushing the push to talk button on the radio? Because there's no connection going into the push to talk. That's the first problem, all right? So uh, the Bofang's got Vox. So we said, all right, well, let's try and use Vox and that'll push the push to talk. Um, the problem is we, it, we couldn't decode the packets coming out. Uh, and one of the things we thought about was the Vox is too slow. All right, the, the audio signal's coming in. It's got a little bit of a delay at the beginning, the TX delay, and then it's gonna start transmitting data, but the Vox and the Bofang was chopping off the first part of the signal and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't working and that's possible. The other thing actually Al pointed out when we were down there is you're piping a speaker level output of a computer into a microphone level input on a valve thing and it's, it's not gonna work. You're gonna have impedance mismatches, level mismatches and all that stuff just, just you know, ain't gonna work. So maybe if you were really finicky, you could make it work. But uh, in the testing that we did that day, uh, it didn't work. You know, I think you're stuck with one of these other two uh, uh, options. So this is Signal Link. A lot of people are familiar with the Signal Link. It's a USB sound card. It'll create its own push to talk through its own Vox circuitry. Um, you can see it's got its own TX and RX uh, controls on the front, which is different from the device I'm going to show you in just a minute. Um, the thing I, I don't quite like about the, this is it's got an RJ45 output. Um, so you've got to get cables that go to your specific radio. And I've just ended up ordering them from, uh, uh, from Signalink because I don't have this device that Frank's got that will actually you know, connect cables up to an RJ45 that nobody that, other than Frank wants to do anyway. Um, so that's kind of a, 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 a minor pain in the ass uh, if you're going to use a signal like with a bunch of different radios. The other option that, that we, we've got one of these down the clubhouse and we kind of like them uh, is a master's communications DRA box. Uh, what we've got down there, I think, is a DRA 50. This is a picture from the DRA 34, and you can look at the differences online and, and, and see what they are. Um, the older signal links will not, uh, the transformers and the signal links will not go fast enough to handle the faster VARA speeds. The newer signal links will, but I had the older ones. Uh, the master's communication apparently has the fast enough transformer, so it will do that. You can see the audio adjustments are pots on the board. They're not knobs on the front, but once you get it right, it should be okay. Um, the other thing I liked about this, especially the way we're using it down the clubhouse, is the output is either a DB9, which is pretty easy to solder to, or it's a six pin DIN. And it's the same six pin DIN that's the digital input on a lot of radios, okay? And it's wired the same way. And they'll give you the six pin mail to mail cable. So what we did was we just ordered one of these things, got the cable plugs that plug one end of it into this one, the other end into the radio and we're done. Okay, so if you've got a radio that has that kind of an input, which is almost all the current radios do, this is a real easy way to do it. And I think these things are a little cheaper. You can buy them without the case or you can buy them with the case. It's actually a 3D printed case. And I think they were, I think they were 80 bucks with the case where a signal link was 100 and something. So, you know, if you're, if you're looking for something, go look these guys up. Um, this is what the two meter station looks like. And I'm gonna show you a picture of the HS station. The picture is gonna be exactly the same. Um, so here you've got an IE880H radio, um, thanks K2ZA. This is the master's communications box to DRA50. And this little computer here, this $125 PC is running all the software, the gateway software, um, yeah, uh, RMS relay, RMS tri-mode, RMS packet, uh, sound modem, and both VARA protocols. Um, and it's running everything in here. Okay, so this is, these things here are the two meter side of the Windlink station. This is the HF side of the Windlink station. So we've got a FT787 in here. We've got the sound card here. Thank you to Cooper Health System for this radio, by the way. Um, 
we've got an intelligent tuner down here because one of the things that the HF radio does, and I'll be talking about this on Sunday when I talk about the, uh, uh, how the uh, gateway works, is when the internet goes down, the HF station will start reaching out to other stations on HF trying to find someone who's connected to the internet and trying to bring in traffic for local users. And it's gonna, as I said, that's a frequency agile thing. It's gonna reach out to a particular station on a particular frequency, which means that the uh, RMS tri-mode pro program is gonna change the frequency of the radio, which means the antenna has to be tuned to that frequency, which is why we're using an uh, automatic tuner. We're using a long wire on there, different antenna might not need a, uh, a tuner, but uh, this one kind of does. Um, and then the uh, uh, same computer, just running a couple of, uh, of different programs. So that's how all that stuff comes together. A um, couple of other real quick things. Um, if we uh, forget about WinLink for a second, then we go back to uh, retro packet radio, back the way it was back in the, uh, in the 80s and 90s on the wb 2 mnf 7 digipeter was on the Medford water tower and stuff like that. Um, you can use a terminal program. And you can go connect to the digipeter and you can go connect to the mailbox on the digipeter. And the easiest way I found to do that is to download a program called Easy Term from the UZ7HO website, which is the same website as Sound Modem. So the guy who wrote Sound Modem wrote this, uh, uh, this program. And the thing that I had to figure out is to use Easy Term. Easy Term uses a different port. So the previous example I had for these sound card settings, I did not have this thing enabled. All right, you gotta have that enabled if you're gonna use easy term because it's using a different port than the KISS port on it, okay? And in easy term, you basically say, you know, who are you? Um, and what's your mailbox call sign? And who do you wanna talk to? And what's the port address of the, of the uh, sound modem that you wanna talk to? And what's the IP address? And if it's on the same computer, of course, this is the same thing. But it doesn't have to be on the same computer. It's kind of cool because I, I was home uh, connected through the VPN to the uh, uh, WinLink computer. And I was running sound modem on the WinLink computer. And I'm running easy term on my local computer. So all I did is I put in 192.168.50, whatever, of what the... Uh, the uh, Windling computer was, and it worked. It just ran, you know, the, the data right over the network and, and did that. So if you have some reason where you've got, uh, you want to be working upstairs and your radio room is downstairs and you want to be chatting on local, using a local program and you don't want to be running remote desktop, you can do that. Okay. And uh, this would be, uh, what do you want to connect to? It's pretty easy. Put your call in, put the other guys call in. And um, sorry, I, I always do this, but this is, this is a QSO with the mailbox. I basically logged into the mailbox and I said, who have you heard recently on Packet Radio on 03? And that's a huge list of people I've heard recently on 03. And then over in sound modem, this is the actual data moving back and forth. So you could look at that if you want to actually see how the different uh, uh, TNCs are talking to each other. And if you just care about the human side of it, you can be looking at, uh, at that. And then there's a whole bunch of BBS commands you can get if you put in an H command, you can get all the, the uh, uh, BBS commands there. So if you wanna go over and talk to the BBS over at uh, uh, Glassboro, uh, you can do that. There's also a couple of VARA applications and I'm only three slides from the end, so don't worry. You know, we're not going to be going that much longer. There's an application called Vara Chat, which is basically a chat application. And it's also a file sending application. And this is really interesting. Al and I were running this back months ago when we first got Vara going. Like I said, he lives about a mile and a half from me. And we were pushing files back and forth. And that's when we were getting 22 kilobits. Okay, that the, the, uh, uh, there were, you know, 32 quadrants in that VARA screen, and, and the thing was, was just blazing back and forth. So just be aware of the fact that that's there. If you've got VARA station up and you need to chat, you know, not send in WinLake or something like that, just be aware of the fact that, that, that this program is there and it's using VARA. It works with VARA FM, VARA HF, and VARA SAT. Again, this is the messaging level. 
and the VARA uh, FM is the uh, encoding level. There are two different levels. You can just you know, use this program with anything that's at a lower level. And the last one is a program called VARAC, which is for HF. And it is uh, the idea behind this is this is FT8 for people that actually want to have a Q cell. Okay. And you can type text in and talk back and forth. And you're using the VARA HF protocol, which is an error correcting speed adaptive protocol. So you're not just pushing FT8 data back and forth. You can actually have a Q cell with this. Uh, I have not. I have not made this work. I actually installed it on the HF computer uh, down at the, uh, uh, the clubhouse. And I played around with it for about a half an hour, a couple of months ago on 20 meters and was not successful at doing anything with it. But, you know, feel free to come down and fool around with it. It's on the computer, the, the station's there, the HF station's up. And maybe it's something that you're, uh, you're interested in playing around with if you get tired of just shooting FT8 messages back and forth, and you, but you still want to try something that's uh, digital. Okay. So the Tech Saturday session, uh, we're just going to set stuff up and, and let it go. So I'll bring a PC in, I'll bring an HT in, signal link in, and we'll talk back and forth. And you can see how everything works and, and, and comes together. We'll do some win link, we'll do the digi, we'll do some chat. Um, if you're having trouble making your own stuff work or you want to try something out on your own, you know, bring your HT down, bring your signal link, your computer, if you want to get it set up, you know, come on down, uh, experiment with some, some stuff and, and talk to everybody else about uh, what they've been doing. And uh, if there's questions or no questions. Which, which computer? Yes, uh, it, it, it does. I haven't seen an, a VHF connection at the same time that, that there's an HF connection. Um, we could actually try, we can make that happen. Okay, we can, we can basically what you do, and I'm, I'm to be talking about this on Sunday, is you can tell the gateway that there's an internet outage. And if you tell the gateway that there's an internet outage, it will say, okay, I've got a list of local users, people who have logged into the local station on two meters. I'm going to try and go get any mail that's out there from them. So it's going to uh, basically go online on 40 meters and it's going to work its way station by station through a list of stations on 40 that it's going to try and uh, he, that, that it hopes are connected to the internet. And if so, it's going to pull them for mail for all of those local, local stations. And, and I can basically say, um, there's an internet outage on one screen, and then on the other screen, I can say, go poll it now. So that would start us out on 40 meters, and then from the clubhouse table, we could connect on two, and we'll see what happens. Um, one of the things that we found is that little $125 computer uh, runs at uh, 70 80% CPU most of the time, and I think that's part of the reason that, that sound mode is locking up on it. So, um, and why that's happening and what we were trying to do for it is a topic for another day. Uh, another comment? So uh, the, it's, it's, it's a computer I got off of the internet, all right? It's a Windows computer. It runs on an Atom CPU. And the reason it's cheap is because Windows does not charge a licensing fee for a, uh, a computer that's running on an Atom processor. They probably do, all right? Um, and the only problem that I've seen with it is that sound modem is uh, stopping at some point during the day. And I'm theorizing that that's because um, it's uh, running at 100% CPU, gets out of sync with itself, and it, and it stops. But I, I don't know that that's the reason, and I, I can't really tell. So again, if anybody else wants to stick their head in there and, and try and, and you know, see if you can come up with a better answer for that. Um, what I, what's that? It's, it's Windows. Uh, I think it's, I don't know if it's Windows Pro or not. What, John, do you know? John says it's Windows 10 Pro. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it is. Um, I got a couple of, the, you guys have probably seen the, the, the $50 laptops that they were selling over at uh, 
micro center. They were a bunch of laptops that were created for education and, and apparently it didn't work. So my micro center was unloading them. And so I bought one of them and, and spent all Saturday, two Saturdays loading everything up on that. And it's worse than the computer that's in there now. So uh, <laughs> maybe we need a faster computer, but uh, something like that's going to cost more than I want to throw at it right now until I know that that's a problem or not. So, yeah, Carl. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that's not running off of 12 volts uh, directly is the computer. The computer's running off of a wall wart that's plugged in, but the wall wart's given us 12 volts. All right. So yeah, we could, we could, uh, you know, put a connector on there and, and Yeah, I mean, we could, we could, the, the, the whole idea would be to, to be able to take this thing and put it someplace if we needed to and run it off a car battery or something. And it, it doesn't make sense to need 120 volts for that when you could, could have, to. it's just something we haven't done yet. Yeah, Chris? Okay. Yeah, and that's the master's communication box that I was talking about. So, right. And uh, signal link left goes for about 120 last I looked at it. I think so. Okay. Oh, Carl. I, I don't know if peer to peer on VARA. I don't know of peer-to-peer -peer on VARA, so I can't answer that. You'll have to show me what you mean by that. Oh, oh, oh! Um, but you're, but there you're, you're taking a wind link message and you're sending it to another station, without going through a gateway. All right, chat is just hi, Carl. How are you this afternoon? Click. It's it's basically it's texting. It's not email, it's texting. So yeah, yeah, it's not using WinLink at all. Okay, thanks guys.